Hey, y'all, it's Woody Overton, the host of Real Life, Real Crime, the podcast, and you're listening to Local Leaders, the podcast. Hi, I'm Tricia Johnston, Residential Realtor with Ladder and Bloom with your Real Estate Tip of the Week. Many homeowners have shifted the focus of their home improvements to the exterior, but not all improvements will give you the same return on investments. Some, like a swimming pool, will actually make your home less attractive to some potential buyers. Here are the exterior improvements that will give you the most bang for your buck. Outdoor kitchen and living areas, patios and decks, fire pit, landscaping and lighting, and a privacy fence. Now the return on your investment will depend heavily on the quality of construction, so make sure you have all projects professionally done and that they blend in well with the existing structures by incorporating similar design elements and using complementary paint colors. You'll also want to make sure that you comply with any local zoning ordinances and HOA restrictions Be sure that if a permit's required that that's obtained, that'll not only help make sure that the work is done properly, but it'll also help you avoid problems when it's time to sell. You won't have any problems popping up for unpermitted work. And lastly, if any digging is required, be sure that you contact the utility companies so they can locate any underground pipes and utility lines. I hope this has been helpful for you. I'm Tricia Johnston with Ladder and Bloom, and I'll be back here next week with another real estate tip for you. Hi, folks. I want to tell you about Denim Springs Fit Body Boot Camp and their 28-day, $77 Jumpstart program. There's no strings attached and really no reason not to try. You can be in and out in just 30 minutes, and best of all, these 30-minute sessions are scheduled throughout the mornings and evenings to fit your busy schedule. These 30-minute sessions are fun, positive, encouraging, and you can even sign up online. Just visit GetFitDenimSprings.com. Denim Springs Fit Body Boot Camp, a proud sponsor of Local Leaders, the podcast. All right, everyone. Welcome back to Local Leaders, the podcast. This is episode number 134, and sitting across from me in this chair is Jason Duron. (laughs) <laughs> is that right man it, it depends where you're from it's, it's one of the most butchered last names ever it's actually from what i know growing up uh derwin yeah but nobody got it right when i was growing up in high school and what have you and people call me deruin um, deruin yeah, yeah i can so see that i ended up deruin my last name because i was i just like i'm just going with it so I, it. I say jason deruin yeah but derwin is actually the uh french pronunciation there you go jason d <laughs> I <laughs> like that too. Uh, or otherwise known as the Cajun Ninja. So everybody can check him out that maybe you haven't seen all the wonderful things you're cooking up <laughs> and getting a crack of lacking and all that kind of stuff in your uh, in your kitchen on a on a pretty much a daily basis. I mean, you post videos pretty frequently. I try, you know, uh, you know, there are gaps in between, but thankfully I've created enough content that I'm able to kind of resurface stuff, uh, almost like a rerun. Yes. Um, You know, and I was always. HD version. Exactly. (laughs) High definition. (laughs) Yeah. So I I was kind of always nervous about resharing stuff I had done. I thought, well, people saw it, but. I've learned that new people are always coming in yes. and uh, when you resurface it, they're like, I hadn't seen that one. So I, I do that, you know, I just reshare and then create and reshare and it's been really cool. Yeah. I think it's a great idea. And I do want to mention that in this first segment, we are uh, really have a lot of support from Hancock Whitney bank. Very thankful for that. And uh, Mr. Cajun Ninja is going to move all his money to Hancock Whitney at the end of this episode. <laughs> just kidding. It's not I, very much. I hadn't talked to him about that yet, but <laughs> Yeah, Uh, but thank you very much for coming on, and we're going to jump right into it, and the Cajun Ninja maybe isn't so familiar with how we do things here on Local Leaders of the Podcast. We kind of do a long-form podcast where we tell kind of your whole history into how you got to do what you do. We believe that uh, when people know why you do it, they're more apt to support you, buy from you, whatever. 
Uh, so we're going to get into where you were born and raised. Tell tell me about that. So I was born in Thibodeau, Louisiana. Yeah. Um, grew up in Homa, Louisiana. Homa. Um, at about age 27, my wife and I moved to Broussard, Louisiana. So I've got a lot of love and uh, history in, uh, you know, kind of the Southern Bayou region and then also the Acadiana region with Lafayette and all. Absolutely. Um, two of my daughters were born in Lafayette. Yeah. You know, big Cade, Raging Cajun fan, but also a big LSU fan, which yes. I know a lot for a lot of people that shouldn't mix. But I like to say <laughs> that's my recipe. You know? That's it. And look, I was a huge for what they called it USL back in those days. That's correct. But I was a huge USL fan back in the day. I thought I was going to be recruited by them coming out of high school, but that, that, that didn't come to fruition. But I always loved them. And and, uh, and the colors are great. You know? Oh, for so, sure. And Nichols. Like, how we can all you not like red? I'm telling you. I'm telling <laughs> you. And then you got Nichols yeah. where the Saints would do their uh, training. Uh, yeah. For several years, they did their summer training, I think it was there. And I had went to a lot of those. In yeah. And, you know, it's funny because, I mean, I'm sitting here mentioning the Cajuns and, and LSU. Obviously, the, those are probably the more bigger schools when it comes to sports. But I yeah. am repping a Nichols hat. You yes, know? you and are. I, yeah, you know, because the Colonels, that. that is part of the old T-Town where I'm from. <laughs> And, uh, yes. you know, the Colonels have done some great things. we got Coach Rebo there who actually came from UL. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you know, I like to see them grow, and hopefully they become real popular too. I'd love to see them on a level one day like North Dakota State. Yes. You know, which is in that same, uh, you know, realm of football. So I would, I hey, would say so. Let's it's blow possible. it up down in Louisiana. That's it. Let me ask you this before we go any further. So, obviously, the area you just mentioned, Homa, uh, we, you know, our hearts go out to them to, Tell me about that struggle with Hurricane Ida. How are things looking over there? You know, it's crazy, man. Um, the people of Homa, Thibodeau, uh, you know, La Rose, Cutoff, uh, you know, Galliano, all, like Raceland, all these areas that really got affected. Yeah. They're so resilient. You know, they're, they're just, they're so like, uh, all right, well, let's just get out there and clean up, you know. Um, so, you know, there's been struggles, of course, you know, with the amount of groceries on the shelf. Um, a lot of the places we like to dine at, you know, and shop at are not running right now. But, you know, we, we make do with what we have. And, um, uh, you know, people seem to be in good spirits. I mean, they've still been holding, like, you know, these functions around the area. I know Bayou Terrebonne Distilleries down there has uh, put on some great functions for the Ida Relief that have been free to the public. And, and when you get to hang out with those crowds in those moments of just, you know, like, hey, let's relax – you'd swear that a hurricane never even happened, you know? So, um, you know, there are people that are still going through struggles and we're still, you know, trying to find ways to help them. But, uh, for overall, I I think people are in good spirits and know that we'll bounce back. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, you, you said the word there, which was resilient and, uh, of course, people here in Livingston Parish, they know what that means because in 2016, we had a horrible flood <laughs> here in Denham Springs. 90% of the homes went underwater uh, for everywhere from a foot to six feet. It was it was crazy. And uh, we did just what them good folks down there and in your area did, and that was we didn't wait for anybody. We just started picking up the pieces, right? And, and uh, so we know that struggle, and our hearts go out to all those people over there and um <clears throat> i'm not worried about y'all because y'all are some good cajuns and <laughs> you, you know <laughs> well, you you'll just, take care of it you can send us a few prayers yeah, you know? we'll yeah take, we absolutely all, those are free to give <laughs> yes free to give and uh i do want to mention a little bit about your family you got a wife misty absolutely man that's uh, that's my the yin to my yang you know yes. uh, a lot of people don't know but misty is the you know uh she's the spinal cord of the whole platform uh you know she may not be on camera as much you know but she's been super super helpful for the growth of the page um i can't tell you how many times that i did videos and she'd take the three youngins in the back bedroom and just sit back there with them for like hours that's so amazing. I could film and, you know, uh, have the, you know, sound good, not, not little girls screaming in 11 foot ceilings. Um, and, I, and, you know, I think like how many ladies would want to do that? You right. know, you know, more than likely, you know, many women be like, I'm not about to go sit back there, you know, <laughs> but she would do it. She did it many times. And for the first year, there was no money or revenue in this. Facebook didn't pay anything at that time. Yeah. You know, I didn't have products. Um, I was just creating content. I, I just I believed in it. I, I knew it was something that was growing 
and it, something felt good about it, and she supported me 100. percent And uh, I'm grateful for her. You that's know? a beautiful thing. Yeah, yeah. she's uh, she is the the rock of the uh, of the garden. That's for sure. Excellent, and not to be uh, not to be not mentioned, you have three children. Yeah, my my three little girls: Isabella, Zoe, and Juliet. Great names. Little, little ninjets. Yeah, the ninjets. <laughs> yep. I love it. And your wife actually is it the the Cajun lady ninja or something? Well, now, I saw that yeah, somewhere. Well, she, she's like I would talk about her so much that like uh, I would you know I just start calling her Miss Cajun Ninja. Yeah. And I told her you know what, you should create your own page, and she's like, no, nobody's gonna follow me. And I think she has almost like ten thousand people following now. You know, and a lot of she's people, the real star. I do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I told her. I said, "Babe, look, everybody has some type of story to tell, and y- your side of this is actually kind of interesting." You know, like people don't know uh, how you know m- many struggles can be there for the person who's married to the creative content. You know, hundred percent person. You know, like um, I mean, there's a balance there between what I do with the public and what I do with my family. And, you know, for me, it's always, you know, I'm a husband, I'm a dad, and, and you know, then a content creator. Yeah. And I try to always keep that in mind. Um, but, you know, there are times, too, that she, you know, she, you know, makes sacrifices so that I can continue to do what I do. That's a um, beautiful point. Yeah, so she gets to show that on her page. Hey, ladies, it's Pate with Idol Lane Spa and Boutique, located in Walker. We offer all things skincare, hair care, makeup, spray tan, lashes, and more. And we have a full selection of clothes. And we also do private events from birthday parties, bridal showers, and more. So stop by today and get your queen on, making every woman a queen. See you soon. So in addition to all that, you're a fourth degree black belt in Taekwondo and actually an instructor part time in Homa? Correct. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I part run a school down in Homa called Homa Martial Arts. And, um, you know, that's where I teach Taekwondo to people of all ages, really. I, I, you know, my classes consist of. Uh, kids from three to three years old to uh, you know ladies and gentlemen in their fifties and sixties, you know. Yeah, so, it's amazing. Uh, actually, we had a, 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 a lady who came in most recently. It's, well, there's a lady in our class, Miss Donna, who's in her fifties, but she brought in her mom, who's in her seventies, and she came in kicking pads. You know, come on, so, look, you know, a body in motion stays in motion, and uh, you know, Miss Donna's mom said, "If I keep moving, time won't catch me." <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you can learn yeah. so much it's, from uh, more, more seasoned folks. It's and, been great, man. I love the class. Class. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, and uh, shout out to Miss Donna and her mom. Hey, for, shout out Miss Donna and her very, mom. Very good. Now, eventually, uh, through all your life, I mean, there was a lot of things I'm sure on the way, but you made your way to the oil fields at some point, much like a lot of folks, and especially the Lafayette area do, and all that. Tell me, tell me about that. Tell me about your experience in that. Yeah, you know, I was uh, really kind of fortunate to land a job in sales in the oil industry. Uh, mm-hmm. You know. Uh, selling uh, uh, pretty much a service, which is called non-destructive testing. And in the oil field, they they often have to, uh, they test the welded material, you know, or, or, you know, structures that are put together for cracks or if there's any trash in those welds. And they use actually what they do in the medical field, they'll x-ray the welds or they'll even use ultrasonics, you know. And uh, so these companies that are, uh, you know, putting putting platforms together, a welding pipe together, they, they need these services. So I would go out there and, and, and search for those businesses. 100%. How long did you spend doing that? Uh, let's see. Probably almost eight years. Yeah. yeah probably almost so eight years. So you were in it. That was a good stint. I yeah, mean, yeah. I was in it, in it quite a bit. You know, faced some layoffs, man. Uh, you know, and uh, that, that's – I noticed the trend. On, on the second layoff, I noticed the trend. I was like, mm. man, when it's good, it's good. When it's bad, it's bad. That's and right. when it's bad – um, you're the overhead, you know, yeah. uh, as great as, you know, a salesman you can be and build a, a, a division, a, 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 an area, what have you. At the end of the day, you're selling the service. The people that, that are selling the next job are the ones who do the work. Yes. You know, the guys in the field. And yes. those are the ones who are more, more important. Um, you know, and so after that second one, I just, when I sat down on my couch and I told my wife, you know, I, I just want to do something that's me. And I just want to chill for a second. Yeah. And uh, that's how this kind of all started. Awesome. And we're going to get into all of that because that's amazing. And I do want to say you're you're 100 percent correct it, it in the oil industry. It's it's either really good or really bad. And, and I used to tell people all the time they would celebrate because that gas was going down. And look, you want it to be reasonable. But when it would go under about two dollars a gallon, I, I get nervous for my buddies, uh, you know, in these refineries and say, hey, man, two dollars a gallon is fair. Let's not drop it below that <laughs> because they do. They, they you know, it's a derivative. So it goes up and down. And and uh, and unfortunately, these big corporations, they like 
they like the whole profit. So yeah, I mean, um, uh, when it's low like that, that means there's probably too much of it on the shelf, you know. Mm-hmm. So that's right. That's a hundred percent right. Now, you have a passion for food. Imagine that the Cajun Ninja's got a passion for food, and it's obvious, totally obvious, when people watch your videos, um, that you have a real big passion for that. And after you got laid off, kind of saw the writing on the wall, you decided, you know, I'm going to film myself cooking. So yeah. it sounds simple, but take me through that thought process. So really, um, that really wasn't even the thought process. Uh, when I started that page, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I just knew that I wanted to do something that entertained people. Yeah. You know, I, I love to entertain people. I love to make people laugh. And, um, you know, I, I you know, follow Gary Vee. You know, yes. you know, we talked about him earlier. Yes. Um, during those times, like if 2015 was the year before I started doing this. I listened to a lot of his viral videos and, you know, he was real big on just create content, you know, yeah. just create something. And, um, you know, so when 2016 came, I was like, I'm just going to do something. I have no clue what I'm doing, but I'm just going to do something. Yeah. And I would just upload like funny videos, things with my daughters, you know, my wife. Uh, I maybe had like 400 followers through like me inviting all my friends and yes. like, you know, and like, so what really wasn't doing much for about six months. And then I was, uh, Snapchatting myself cooking gumbo. Yeah. And, um, you're able to take like all your snaps and put it into one video. So I was going to put that on like my personal page, like, uh, you know, Hey, this is me messing around cooking gumbo. And I thought, ah, oh, my friends and all, they know how to cook gumbo, man. I got, they're probably going to clown me. Yeah. You know, so I was like, well, I'll put it on my little uh, page at the time was called what you doing to ruin. Um, I love it. Yeah. I didn't have, I didn't have the ninja name at the time. I just, yeah. I just didn't know what to call it. So I called what you doing to ruin. Cause like I was doing anything. Yeah. And then, um, I posted it there and the next morning it, it was shared 11 times. And at that time I had maybe had stuff that was shared three times. Yeah. And when I saw that, I was like, wow, that's a lot, which yeah. is funny to say now. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and then like within two days that one video had a million views and, oh and I was like, Whoa, <laughs> I, I was like, man, I might be on to something here, you know? Yeah. So, uh, at that point, I remember Gary V saying, like, do what you love, whatever you love, do a bunch of things centered around what you love. I love entertaining people. Um, it just turned out that cooking was a thing I did was entertain me. And he had said, whenever that one thing hits, double down on it. I said, I'm going to cook. So I just started cooking. Wow. Yeah. And that's and, how it can be. And here they come. <clears throat> yeah. You know? And so the very next video, um, well, the first video I said, Paya, when I was throwing the uh, Trinity in the pot. And the very next video, I chopped through with my hand and I said, don't mess with the Cajun Ninja. <laughs> yeah. And then Love pe- it. people were saying, they were calling me that. And uh, and, that, that, and I ultimately ended up switching the page name. Man, it, you know, and from one creator to another, that's really where, uh, you know, the these are, are really well-known things that you say now. And, um, and even your name, the Cajun Ninja, came kind of spurred from that stuff. And my point here is it seems like the most simple things are where it's at. I mean, uh, you know, this wasn't – you didn't sit down thinking about a name for for a year. or Maybe you did, but that wasn't what you landed with. You landed with, you know, Cajun Ninja, which yeah. is perfect. It's perfect for what you do. And and the pie uh, – Paya. Paya. Not Pia, yo. Which is what I said when he came in. And yeah. I'm like, I knew it was Paya. Why did I do it? Because I watch his videos. So Man anyway. comes so prepared. I know it. First thing he throws out is a Pia. First thing he throws out. I'm surprised he didn't walk out the door. <laughs> <laughs> I've been Pia'd many times. So, uh, <laughs> it wasn't the first one. Yeah. <laughs> Good deal. Good deal. Well, we're going to get kind of into this next segment. And I do want to mention it's brought to you by Sandra Ricard. And Sandra Ricard is a commercial realtor here locally, and uh, she wanted me to tell you, Mr. Cajun Ninja, two things. One, she went fishing the other day, and she wanted to thank you for sharing that video because it got like 75,000 views on it. I don't know if you remember that, but she did a fishing video the other day that you you shared. She was on a uh, something with fish. She was on like a commercial fishing trip or something. And oh, anyway, man, I, I, she's I, an awesome woman. Well, right but on. A commercial realtor, and she said when you 
can't stand it. You got so much of this stuff and you're looking for a commercial building to expand. She got you covered. So oh, right on. There you go. Right. He's going to look you in, up, Miss Sandra. Put that in the back pocket. <laughs> <laughs> put that in the back pocket. <laughs> First video you did, which was gumbo. I'm going to tell you a quick story you made. Well, I know you don't know it. But uh, another friend of this show is Woody Everton with Real Life Real Crime. We talked about him earlier. And Woody... You know, a lot of you people out there know him. He just signed with iHeartRadio, big true crime podcaster. Um, Woody, when I told him you were coming on the show, said, you're kidding. I know that dude. I said, you do? He said, let me tell you a story. So Woody tells me that he is quite the cook as well. And he said, I had a gumbo recipe, Jim, I've used for 20 years. And he said, I kind of want to try something different. Just wasn't, you know, it was like the same one over and over. It's good, but I wanted something different. So he called his mother and he said, um, you got a gumbo recipe maybe that's different than the one I've always used. I want to try something different. She said, here's what you need to do, Woody Everton. You need to go to YouTube and you need to YouTube this guy called the Cajun Ninja. And he's got a recipe on there that you need to try. Wait, her, his mom? His mother did. Wow. 85 years old. Well, I am humbled yes. by this. So Woody said, I did just what mama said. Went to uh, YouTube and checked it out. And he said, Jim, I'm telling you, I made that recipe. It's the best gumbo I've ever made. And I've made it about four times now. So wow. y'all are already friends. They ain't even met each other wow. yet. <laughs> yeah, well, that's that's really cool, man. I, you know, look, I, I tell people all the time, I don't consider anything I do the best by any means. Um, I think food is subjective. You yes. know, we all have a preference. Um, but to hear someone say that is obviously uh, super humbling. And yeah. that his mom, you know, uh, you know, decided to talk about me to him. Yeah. I take that in high regards because, you know, to me, age is wisdom. So anytime I'm compared to a grandma or yes. grandma's uh, referencing me, I will take that. That is awesome. It was Woody Everton mom approved. Yeah, well, basically. shout out to Woody <laughs> Overton's mom. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> Fit blends of Denim Springs can help you with everything from meal prep to supplements. I love it that they serve breakfast all day in addition to the best ultra healthy wraps you can really get anywhere in Livingston Parish. They are home of the $5 Smoothie Friday and are an amazing sponsor of Local Leaders, the podcast. Fit blends Denim Springs, fast, fit, Food for you. So, on that first video, uh, which was gumbo, um, it went viral. And when we say went viral, what does that what does that mean? And over yeah, a million I views. I don't know what would really constitute as viral anymore, or de defines viral. I guess I guess if you hit a million, right? Yeah. That would that would seem pretty viral. Yeah. Um, you know, um, but yeah, like currently that video sits at like 45 million views and, and it's been shared, I think over 500,000 times, <laughs> you know, across the many different ones. Cause uh, you know, I've, I've put it out there a few different times every year. I try to repost it again, um, around, uh, you know, the year that it, uh, it debuted was October 17, 2016. And, uh, it's crazy because like I call it the infamous gumbo. And the reason why I say infamous is because there were many people who tried it and loved it and, and had confidence, but there were many people who hated it too, because yeah. gumbo is one of those controversial dis dishes that your mama has a recipe, your aunt has a recipe, your grandpa, that's not how you do it. You got to put this, you got to put that, you know? So there was a lot of hate in the beginning. Uh, Everybody's got their different spin on it. It's kind of like boiling crawfish. <clears throat> Look, some people say pour the salt in there. Some people say don't pour the salt. It don't work. Uh, to me, the the end result does it taste good yeah well pff, i'm down yeah for sure and look <laughs> I, i've learned there is no right way to do it at all because yeah. if there was a right way to do it then there would be no need for the gumbo cook-off that's right you know that's right the reason why we have a cook-off is to see who's the best on that day according to this group of people yes you know yes. and then the next year we do it again and that's why there's always a new winner because that day we got a new lineup of people and what their taste is, is, you know, whoever they thought the best was that day. That's right. You know, so. That's right. And keep it positive. Yeah, you know, it's, yeah. uh, er everybody's got their own spin. And I'll give you an example of one of your videos that worked for me. And, and, uh, 
really put a, a new spin on the way I do things. I think I make one of the best chilies ever known to man on the history of the earth. Right now, on. It, me and my wife. I don't know if anybody else thinks that, but we definitely do. But, but, I was watching your video on chili. And I'm watching it, and I'm like, I might could take the Cajun Ninja on this. So I'm watching it <laughs> through and through, and I'm like, hey, he does pretty much the same stuff I do. And we're looking at it, and all of a sudden, you pull out the – the ace of spades or something man you pull out chocolate and you say it can't be sweet no no don't, don't put no sugar to... no you want unsweetened chocolate but you drop two things of chocolate and you know what i did i hit pause first i hit pause i'm like oh he done did it now i hit pause i went in there i told my wife i said check this out next time i make chili i'm putting unsweetened chocolate in it she looked at me and she goes "Ooh." <laughs> <laughs> i said i'm telling you I ain't never thought of that, but um, it, I haven't done it yet. But yeah. I plan on doing it, and I will let you know. But I, you know, everything's better with chocolate. Let's be honest, sweet or yeah, not. Yeah, like I love chocolate, like big time. Mm. And I'll tell you, man, there's been a few people, uh, quite a few people, who have tried it already since I've, I've put it out there, and um, they'll tell you, like when you taste it before, it's good. But something about it, the chocolate does something where it enhances. It's like it enhances the chili powder, the cumin, the things that really make a chili chili. Yeah. Um, and it's really good. Yeah. I, I'll tell you what, I'll put chocolate in chicken noodle soup. It don't. Oh, man, look, you, you love <laughs> chocolate. Huh? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Maybe I need to make a video of that. Drop your chocolate in there. You want a video to go viral? Put chocolate in your chicken noodle soup. <laughs> Indeed. Those are the things you're going to get out of watching these videos is, you know, just a new spin on something maybe. It, or maybe he's doing it the same way you did it. Uh, but you you, you got to watch and check it out. I'm telling you. But what makes uh, the Cajun Ninja so amazing is the entertainment that goes along with what you do. And I want to want to kind of bring that up in segment three, and that's brought to you by Root Home Inspection, Sean Root. He does mold inspections, pool inspections, online reporting, and he will inspect commercial buildings. So when you get that commercial building with all this stuff in there, Sean Root will come inspect it for you. How about that? Right on. <laughs> so you're off and running, right? You're you're turning out fat videos faster than Bruce Lee can throw round kicks. That's pretty fast. You don't like that, don't you? Bruce Lee and round kick. Yeah, that's fast. Yeah, kicking like yeah. Bruce Lee is yeah. pretty fast. One inch punch. <laughs> <laughs> right in the chair. <laughs> anyway, that's a that's a whole nother video. Uh, so you're turning them out, and uh, you develop a sh- kind of like I don't want to call it a shtick because it's you, right? But uh, and it's not a gimmick. And sometimes when I think a shtick, I think a gimmick. It's not a gimmick. This is who this man is. Um, but it's Excellent things to make all your episodes entertaining. One of them that I'll mention right off the bat it, that I have interviewed some people since you was coming on the show. I went to friends and I said, what's your favorite thing about the Cajun Ninja? You know, cause it's good to see what your fans really take to. And, uh, everybody loves a karate chop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. They love it. You hit that thing and, and, uh, and do some, I guess some camera magic and boom, there it goes. And you dice and you dice some vegetables all over the place. What, what made you think of that? What do you mean? Camera magic? Man? <laughs> what are you talking? It is real. I yeah, knew it. <laughs> People always say like, how do you chop your vegetables? Cause they always look so pretty. And I, and I'll send yeah. them a picture of this right here. <laughs> <laughs> if you had this weapon, uh, <laughs> no, man. Um, it's kind of funny because like I tell people a lot, you know, sometimes I wish I'd have thought of something a little easier. Um, cause yeah, that's, that scene takes probably almost an hour. You know? um, <laughs> I and, feel your pain. It's such a Trust quick me. little scene. Right. But yes. like, um, everything has to be aligned perfectly. And then I'm trying to make it as realistic as possible with a, a camera in hand, you know? Mm-hmm. So, um, when you do that, um, you got to come back to it and understand where the cropping is, yeah. you know? So to be lined up good on that. But, um, yeah, I don't know, man. I, like, I think whenever, uh, I was doing that second little video, I just, I just thought it'd be cool to do that. You know, I think I like camera trickery and, uh, you know, th- things that kind of catch you off guard. And uh, um, I threw it in there, and people seemed to love it. So I was like, well, I'm going to keep doing it every time. And like you said, it, it ended up being my, my shtick. You yeah. Know? 
and uh, or my niche, however. Niche. Say that's it. Yeah, a better yeah. word for it. Yeah. Shtick is, kinda, yeah. Shtick is just hard to say, you know. Yeah, uh, you know. <laughs> it really like, is. Like Try it, to spell it. I feel Let's like when you, when you air this, it's, and I'm like, it's gonna be my, and it's just gonna be my beep, you know. Yeah, <laughs> Cause I just didn't say it right. <laughs> right. But, uh, yeah, no. So my niche and, um, yeah, it, it's, it has really stuck out with all ages. I love when like parents send me their kids trying, yeah. like they full on believe they can do it oh, know? Yeah. and they nail that onion oh. and it just <laughs> rolls off the table <laughs> and they're so deflated, but it's fun. BJ Pawn and Gun in Denham Springs wants to buy your unwanted gold jewelry, gold coins, and gold bullion. With 30 years of experience operating in the Livingston Parish area, BJ Pawn wants to be your source when selling your gold. So stop by BJ Pawn today for a no obligation offer. BJ Pawn, a proud sponsor of Local Leaders, the podcast. Oh, it really is. It's it's great. And of course, I mentioned to you earlier, my favorite part is when he grabs the pots and says, Oh, uh, it's time to get your pot. Hit it up. Yes. My favorite <laughs> part. I run around the house saying that and everybody looks at me. I've got three kids too. So yeah. a little bit older than yours. I got 16 year old twins, 18 year old son, but it don't matter. I still tell them heat it up. It That's it, man. Look, look, you know, the beauty of that line to me is, is it's, it's time, you yeah. know, like, and I that's think right. that's why people like it. And I even put it right here in the back of the can, get your pot yes. heated up, you know? And I had, you know, a lot of thoughts in my hand of uh, my head of like, should I make it Cajun and, you know, uh, you know, put like getcha or something like yeah. that. But I thought, you know, that's kind of how I say it when I started. So uh, I just fully pronunciated. And that way, if somebody in Delaware ends up with this can, they're going to understand what that means. That's right. <laughs> you know? That's right. Get your pot heated up. And, um, yeah, I, I love that line because it's like, all right, it's time to start cooking. Love it. Yeah. And then my my other line that I like is, of course, anytime you're dealing with the ninja, it's got to be crack a lacking, right? <laughs> got to be crack a lacking. Yeah. We crack a lacking in this podcast today, yeah. and you get it crack a lacking everywhere else. And uh, you even got t shirts say crack a lacking. That's right. Don't man. think I ain't going to order one. You know, the, and like, <laughs> it was so cool when I was designing it, and it just like, it was this amazing light bulb as I was writing it out, like, like crack a lack and the L just fit right perfect in the middle. Yeah. And I said, I'm gonna put the state of Louisiana. Yes. You know, and it says, let's get crack a lacking. You know, like hundred yeah. percent, man. <laughs> you uh you definitely have a talent for all of that stuff. And the numbers kind of show that. And that's a great thing about what we do as creators is we know if we're if we're really giving the people something they want to hear because they'll tell us by not watching or watching, and your success has just been phenomenal. Uh, you said it was your second video you came out with the. Wow, man. Yeah, the pie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, awesome. I said pie on the first one, but all I did was throw the Trinity in the pot, and then the second one I chop I chopped the vegetable. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That just great moves all around. You've really made made the right moves at the right time, and I think it's just who you are. It wasn't designed to, you know, gain followers per se. It's just, hey, man, I, this would be funny, and and you do it, and just took yeah, excellent sure. work. Uh, so you mentioned Gary Vee earlier, which uh, we talked a little bit off camera, and he's a pretty successful content creator. I'm sure everybody knows Gary V out there. Uh, he he has a following like no other, but he has, a, he has a motto, and you mentioned this in your questionnaire. I think it spoke volumes about who you are. You said, uh, or he said, chase happiness, not money. My question is, how much did that resonate with you? Huge, man. Um, you know, like... Uh, uh, especially now that I've I've grown what I've grown now uh, through happiness um, that I've understood, you, you know, if you work hard at something that you're just passionate about, the work will come a lot easier. And then when it does blossom into something that can be financial, that can you know provide for your family, you, you're 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 kind of you're kind of set really. Like I mean, um, you know, um, as long as it's enough that, like you said, that can that can cover your needs. You're set. You're, you're every day when you get up, you're doing something you truly love. Yes, you know, and, and I know what I know what it means to get up and go to a place where I'm not necessarily happy or not wanting to do something I really care for, but I have to because 
I'm committed to the things that I have, my mortgage, my car, my kids schooling, yes. you know, and uh, and a lot of people are in those places, you know, and it's not easy to just jump into something like I did. You know, I was fortunate enough that I was kind of smart with my money and saved a lot of it. And then uh, when I had that next layoff, I was able to just, you know, do what I did. But um, yeah, yeah, for sure, man. Um, chasing happiness for sure. Like, I, I mean, even as this grew, grew and blossomed that first year, I wasn't putting out like all kind of crazy amounts of merch or anything like that or yeah. or constantly trying to get more followers. Like you don't you never really hear me say, make sure you like and subscribe. Yeah. You know, I don't I don't really say that. You know, not not if anybody does, that's fine, you know. But like for me, it was like I'm just gonna do what I love. If they they wanna subscribe, they wanna be part of it, great. If not, I just keep doing that, you know. Um, because I'm I'm not wow. trying to chase numbers, you know. I'm happy to talk to the one versus having to keep up with one million. Yes. You know, and I'll tell you, yes. And I, and I'll say this as well as a caveat, as an addition to that, if you're doing what you love and you're genuine, those followers will come just because you are who you are. Right. I want to mention the top five videos you have posted on YouTube. I did a little research, went and looked at the numbers in case people, cause I know what's going to happen. Some people are going to hear this and they're like, yeah, I've heard of the Cajun engine, but I never watched your stuff. So here's some favorites, uh, you know, according to the YouTube numbers, anyway, your chicken and sausage gumbo and HD, uh, <laughs> almost 700,000 on that, on the views on that one. Crawfish boil. Uh, 373,000 crawfish etouffee, 371,000 smother pork chop at 365 and hamburger steak at 329. So that's your top five, but, uh, it kind of in order as far as what you have currently posted on your, on your YouTube that I can find. Yeah. And that order would probably be different on Facebook. Yeah. Cause I know for a fact, the one not in HD. Yeah. Is way more popular. Oh, yeah. Which is crazy because earlier we were talking about how, like, sometimes just simple stuff, right? Yeah. That video was done on Snapchat, low quality, no music, no none. I don't even show my face on camera. Like, you know, and, and that video is That's crazy. Uh, yeah, has seen has seen them by the most people. Yeah. yeah. So the more to that story is you don't have to have a million dollars worth of equipment to now. Um, I know that you know I'm sitting here with F SM Seven Bs and and I'm googling Joe Rogan and his equipment. And I want to copy it, and we got the same stands, by the way. I'm not gonna lie, these are pretty <laughs> badass. Can I say badass? Yes, because you it, can absolutely they are say badass. That. Thank you very much. And uh, and anybody can get it. You mentioned Facebook and, and uh, you know, does it ever bother your mind that over one million people are on your Facebook page? Oh, yeah. That's, I mean, that's. God, Just sit back and think of that. Well, think like, about that. The, the way I put it in perspective, uh, which for a lot of people, you know, uh, could, could definitely, you know, fathom this, is if you've ever sat in Tiger Stadium and looked around, you're looking at 100,000 people and, like, that's that is a substantial amount oh, of people yeah, when yeah. you look around and you multiply that times 10 you know like like that's how many people like know who you are it that it that can be overwhelming and took an interest um, in what you were saying yeah right? yeah and and look you know i i always try to stay in the mindset of like be humble you know mm -hmm. be grateful um because um at the end of the day to me like i i, I get to be on this this stage but they follow in this stage they walking up to this stage they're allowing me to perform for them yeah. um so that's why i don't always say like they follow me you know yeah. they follow I'll, you if you ever listen to me talk i'll usually say like thank you for following my platform you yes. know thank you for following the, the place i'm allowed to do this you know yes. um that you've given me this opportunity yeah you know but yeah like to to really put that in a whole perspective um, it's, it's wild, you know, and I, I think, you know, it, it doesn't really register until like, you know, when we were like in Tennessee and we were getting recognized there and I've been, you know, recognized in Ohio and, uh, Galveston, Texas. Crazy. And, huh? Yeah. That's weird. You know, because yeah. I, I don't know, like I, I still have the mentality that we just saw the same people. Like, uh, uh at, at the end of the day, we're all on the same stage this morning. You and I got out, put our, put our feet on the same ground. 100%. So there's no reason for me to think that anybody's looking up at me. That's you right. Know, so. That's right. And look, if I ever need a good humbling, I just go home. The wife will humble me. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, look here, you two star. Go in there and wash them dishes. And I'm like, yes, man. <laughs> no yeah. problem. We still live a real just life. Just who you know? I am. Yeah. And and what a blessing for both of us. You, you, you know, and I would never compare myself to your, your followership that you have. 
but we're both compare. very blessed to be able to do this, right? Right. And that is the comparison. Yes. It doesn't. The numbers is 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 irrelevant. Yeah. The comparison is the blessing. Yeah. You know. So 100%. yeah, for sure. Hundred percent. Do want to mention you include your, you know, a lot of your videos. You'll have your kids in there. I'll, I'll mention one in particular, and it was when you received the silver play button from YouTube. And for people out there that are like, Dude, what? What's a silver play? Look. In a creator's mind, that's a that's a huge honor. Um, you have to get over a hundred thousand subscribers to qualify for that. There's even a gold one above that uh, for the buttons. But when you got that, you did kind of an unboxing, I guess you could say, of that on live on YouTube, and your kids were there, and your wife, and you did this nice little thing. But you include the family in some of your videos, and and I think that's pretty awesome, too. So e even the young ones are learning early. You got a bunch of creators coming up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you Crazy know. Crazy Ninja Babies. <laughs> and look, I, uh, I, I, I have them part of it here and there, but I – I, I, I don't want it to be to the point where I'm, uh, you know, it, it's fixated on let's create content with y'all. You know? Yes. I, I still want them to just continue to live a normal kid's life, which 100%. I don't know really what that is anymore. It, 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 we're always evolving. But, yeah. um, but you know, um, yeah, every once in a while they do want to do some stuff. So we have created a few things, but I don't make it a point to, to make sure that, that we do doing videos constantly. But right. uh, yeah, yeah, if I can include them, I definitely will because... Um, I, I think my success is ultimately um, a, a part of my entire family, not just yes. me videoing what I do, you know. Very, very well put and true. And now we're going get, to get to uh, this stuff right here, the seasoning of all seasonings. <laughs> and this is, we're going to call this segment four. It's brought to you by Rhino Electric. They handle all of your electrical needs, whether it's commercial or new residential. So give them a call because... They can charge all of your electrical needs without shocking your wallet. How you like that? That's that is one. a nice catch. That's a good line. one. I love yeah, it. Yeah, that I was smart. It. Yeah, so check them out. Uh, so let's talk paya seasoning. Um, and I talked to you about this a little off camera, but one of the ways that I discovered the Cajun Ninja was he's very good with listing, you know, doing a little video or a picture of where he's at, putting it on Facebook, putting it on Instagram. And I follow Carter's Grocery Store, which y'all have heard me talk about Carter's many times. Love that place. Uh, and he was at Carter's and he took a picture of him stocking shelves or whatever. And and uh, I said, wow, man, that, that's a pretty cool name, Cajun Ninja. What does that dude do? And, I, and I, I love seasoning. So I saw that, and I'm like, maybe I need to check that out. Then I saw the next day you were at Oak Point and, uh, and took a picture. And that's kind of how I discovered you. But you're known for that seasoning. And I guess my question to you would be, how would you describe it? Because you go to the – you know, you go to the racks and they got twenty different seasonings sitting there. What's what's what do you what's different about yours? Yeah, you know. Stephanie Berthelot and the crew at SR Enterprise can handle it all, from sheetrock to texture to paint. Give Stephanie a call at 504-432-9284. SR Enterprise where they spread the paint and you spread the word. You know, so for, uh, for mine, it was something I worked on for a good year and a half in my kitchen, you yeah. know, just like I tell you all the time, it was like breaking bad a seasoning, you know, yeah. like I was just, I was measuring grams and, uh, you know, had it all, all mapped out, added together. Then I'd have to, you know, send it off to the, the people who I get to manufacture it. They'd send me their mass production sample of what it would be like in the can. Yeah. Have to cook with that. Nope, that wasn't it. Have to do it again. Um, and, you know, ultimately I settled on a blend that I thought would have, you know, uh, good spice, good hints of garlic, you know, and, uh, you know, a blend of other flavors uh, with enough salt to, to have flavor. But, you know, not so much that, you know, if you if you start pouring it in, it, it gets overly salted. Right. You know, so, um you know, I knew I probably couldn't win the salt game and seasonings, you know, with with the ones that are out there. Sure. But I, I, I could probably stand apart with, with good good kick. Yeah. You know, it's, and that's what I think. I think it's got good kick. When you taste it raw, you know, the spice will hit you. But the, the amount that it's uh, balanced at, when you cook with it, it, it's not so overbearing or overpowerful. So yeah. um, I'm very happy with it. Um, I would tell people all the time, though, like, is it the the best seasoning you'll ever try? Look, that's always going to be somebody's opinion on on what's good and what's not. Yeah. Um. You know. But when people say, "Hi, well, how do you compare to somebody else?" 
You have to try to, to tell yeah. me, you know, I, I can't tell you, yeah, guys, go out and get you some right now. You know, like <laughs> I'm, I'm not that guy. I, I refuse yeah. to be that guy. Um, like I said, I'm happy with it. I cook with it. I love it. And, um, you know, if, if you want to give it a try, it's out there. I noticed on your videos and this is, this is how good a dude you are. Cause I don't know if I would do this. I'm like, man, I'm feeling really inadequate now, <laughs> but he'll put, he'll, you know, he'll say two tablespoons of paya and then, or your favorite, favorite. Cajun or yes. Creole seasoning. Yeah. Yes. And that's, that's pretty awesome, man. Cause most people wouldn't do that considering they had their own season. They'd just be like, Oh, if you don't use paya, it ain't gonna work. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Look, I, you know, and I, I guess, I guess, yeah, I could have went that direction, right. Yeah. Of like, uh, oh, this is what you got to use, you know, but I, I mean, that's, that's not, not you. that's not me and it's not yeah. true. Yeah. You know, it's just not true. And I, I believe in truth and logic. You know, I think if you're going to, if you're going to take on any debate or any argument, if, as long as you're using truth and logic, you, you'll probably be in a good place. And, um, you know, so that's what I think. And then, then I'm able to kind of like, maybe nudge off some of the haters who would chime in and say, well, I don't like, I like this, that, you know, cause I've already said, you know, I feel like I kind of eight mild it, you know, like Eminem, yeah. you know, yes. I, I just went ahead and told you, yeah, go ahead and use what you love. Yeah. You know, like you don't have to use mine. You use what you love. If you've yeah. got something that works and that makes you happy, then that's what you should do. Yeah. Always. But here's know? another option. Is yeah, all you're yeah. giving, you're giving yeah. people another option. And let me tell you, um, good stuff. Good stuff. Well, I'll say you. it. It's good thank stuff. You. Now, um, People are going to wonder, they're going to say, man, where can I get that stuff? We're based out of Livingston Parish. And of course, I'll tell you here, you can get it at Carter's grocery store. You can get it at Oak Point. Uh, are you in um, Jubin over there on Jubin? I'm drawing. A if I am, Jubin. I'm not sure. Uh, only reason why I say that is because I was doing a lot of my own distributing. Mm -hmm. um, but then when I got in with uh, Happy City, they started distributing to people in Louisiana. Gotcha. So there aren't it are it is in places now that I'm I'm unaware of. But I mean, I know in the Baton Rouge area, it's in it's in every Rouse's. Um, Oak Rouse's, Point. that's what I was trying yeah, to think I, of. I'm in all 65 Rouse's, I think okay. it is. And, uh, yeah, we got one right down the road. So yeah. You must be in that one. Yeah, Rouse's has been great, man. You know, they, 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 uh, they've they sold quite a bit of it, you know, yeah. thankfully to the public, you know. Yeah. Um, also in uh, Ralph's, uh, Ra Ralph's, Ralph's yeah. Market. Yep. Mm -hmm. So uh, Carter's, Rouse, Oak Point, uh, Hubbins, um, Benedetto's. And you know what yeah. I love about all those names <clears throat> you're spitting out? All of those are local grocers there bonings that's another one yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and and so that kind of fits in with my show mm -hmm. and and uh and love all those folks and and so check that out if you go into a place if it's okay if i say this if you go into a place and they don't have it ask them for it sure you yeah. know and uh and maybe shoot uh shoot the cajun ninja a message on facebook and say hey i live in you know, ten buck two, and we ain't got none of that season in here, and I want some. Yeah, and look, he'll you know, over there. People uh, hit me up uh, and say, "Well, when are you gonna get it here?" And it's like, you you could help me with that. You know, uh, maybe go to that store, find out who it is, and you yes. talk to, tell, tell them, them to contact me. Yeah, uh, and we'll make it happen. Because yeah, I ship. I actually, I cover uh, Max Fresh Market. I, I I mean, I distribute my own product to them mm -hmm. um, by just shipping it to them. Uh, and I ship directly to their stores, and it's in Alexandria, uh, Pineville, it's in Monroe, it's in four different ones in Arkansas. So, um, yeah, I, I'll put the work in and get it if you, if you want it, and yeah. I'll make it happen. And I saw you put a post on uh, Facebook, and you said, hey, where you want me to go next? And yeah. I, I threw up Tennessee. I think Tennessee is a great place for I would seasonings. love to get it there, for sure. Yeah, I got some hookups in Tennessee. Oh, I'm gonna, let I'm, me know. I'm going to see what I can do for you. It's more natural than just about any of the ones. I, I mean, I know there's others out there, but it's a, it's pretty much a – would you say an all natural? So, so here's the thing. I, I technically cannot say all natural because the place I get it manufactured does a wide variety of things. And, mm. you know, they, they have, you know, products that are probably preservatives and what have you that sure. aren't technically considered all natural, but are obviously safe in moderation. Yeah. Um, but the ingredients that are in mine or natural ingredients only. Even my anti-caking agent is a rice concentrate. Yeah. So, um, you know, if you look at the ingredients, it's all stuff you can pronounce. Very good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that'll tell you right there. It's, yeah. it's probably probably more natural than not. So we'll say 99.9% .9 yeah. on that. But the only reason why I can <laughs> is because they do other things in the facility and like the little bit of particles that might have been left over could be in, you know, yeah. but, uh, yeah. So I, I don't put all natural. If I, if I had my own facility and manufactured my own thing, only mine, then I could say it. Yes. Know? Yes. <clears throat> Perfect.
William Waldrop of TWFG Insurance in Denham Springs can service all of your insurance needs. Offering auto, life, health, and commercial insurance, William Waldrop of TWFG Insurance is a proud supporter of Local Leaders, the podcast. We're going to move into segment five, and that's brought to you by Performance Tire and Auto. Go see Ben Morris and the team at Performance. Free flat tire repairs and free rotations with every oil change. Full service repair facility. Tires, AC, diagnostics, man, they do it all. They do it all. So go see uh, Ben Morris and those folks at Performance Tire and Automotive located right here in Denham Springs. Now, it's important to mention you got branded merchandise. Yeah, yeah, I and do. We I, talked yeah. about t-shirts. I a little have bit stuff uh, over at uh, thecajunninja.com. Yeah. You know, uh, it's because people ask for it. You know, but, so I yeah. made it uh, hats and uh, um, you know, I got my my spuntula. You know, I call yeah. it I, sometimes. I call it spatula. I've seen that earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that on your last on episode. Yes, yeah, and people love it, man. It's a great stocking stuffer. So this time of year, it sells pretty heavily. But uh, you know, it's made of bamboo, so it's light. Um, bamboo doesn't hold bacteria. Um, you know, it, it's, you know, better with heat, handles heat better. And, uh, the way it's designed, it has a little bit, almost kind of like a flatter top, big curve on one side, small curve on the other. So it can handle big curve pots, small curve pans yes. and make a roux. Very and, uh, good. Very <clears throat> good. And I, and I was watching an episode and actually you taught me something on that one. You were doing the diced vegetables and look, the thing I can't stand about that is it takes so long, right? It's like a half hour at least. You got to let them things saute in there. It just is what it is. I can't speed up time. I'm impatient, whatever. So, um, so you're doing all that and you mentioned to pour something in that pot to kind of get that, keep it from sticking on the bottom. Yeah, so, uh, you know, as you're doing that, you know, mm-hmm. you know, if you're not taught this and you're trying to get your vegetables off and you see all that stuff building in the bottom, mm-hmm. people think, oh, I, I got, I, I'm burning it. Give me a Brillo pad. Really, yeah. if you just add a little bit of water, it'll break up and you can yeah. keep cooking your vegetables down. There you and go. all that water will evaporate because people are afraid to do that because they think, oh, it's going to get soggy. It's, or it's going to get bland, you yeah. know? And uh, But you're continuing to cook uh, in a pan that's uncovered so the water will evaporate, you yeah, know? and it works, and it breaks it up, and it adds nice color to your vegetables, and fantastic, yeah, great little technique. And what made me think of that was you mentioned that spoon chilla, mm-hmm. and I believe you were using that at that point in time. So you can get that on his website, and I'm going to link that to this video as well. And that merchandise, these are attractive looking t-shirts, and I'm sure you got hats on there. Yeah. And you oh, this know. is one right here, actually. I, I really love this one, man. You know, it's very patriotic. Yeah, Lu- Louisiana is the only state uh, where the word has USA running right in the middle. No, no other, no other that. state has that, you know. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. So it's, it's Louisiana. I put the state as the L, and then uh, the U S and A, red, white, and blue. Yes, love it, and yeah. it's great that we have a state that's a letter, right? So you can use it as a letter. I mean, if we were Mississippi, we'd be in a bond. But yeah. with uh, Louisiana, you can use it. As, you know, well. It's on this side, but I, I usually have a logo of the state above this yeah. with a heart on Livingston Parish because that's uh, where we're based out of. We brought up holidays. It's Christmas. Well, it's th- let's not th- forget about Thanksgiving, folks, which um, which often gets overlooked because everybody loves Christmas time. But this is a great time for you because I was sitting there thinking today. And, and when I'm not thinking about me, I'm thinking about you, Mr. Ninja, and your business. And I was thinking... It'd be great if he did like a series just based around holiday food, right? Stuff that you can cook. For example, we were talking about earlier with the one you just released uh, with the crawfish. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, that's something I'm going to make as a side dish now. And I w- may not have thought of that had you not dropped that video. but. Yeah. I'd love to see you do some drops on some side dishes that you can do that maybe people don't normally think of when they think of holidays. Yeah, well, uh, you know, this time of year, that's often what I do is either resurface stuff that I have that's geared towards that or I'll, I'll recreate one or, or, you know, put another, you know, touch on one. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I got my baked mac and cheese. I'm going to yeah. get out there. There's I've got one. my dirty rice. I'm going to yeah. get out there. I just reposted my fried turkey. You know, so, uh, yeah, I, believe me, I, those cross my mind. For yeah, sure. yeah, mm-hmm. excellent. So look for look for those coming out. Uh, and I've mentioned this a couple of times, but I'm linking his YouTube to the 
to this page. So go give him a like and uh, and follow him. He's not going to actually do that, but I'm going to tell you, dude, <laughs> do it for me. And you'll love it. Trust me, you'll thank me for it later. Um, I'm going to digress a little bit. Just mention one thing that I didn't mention earlier. Now, you were in a band in your 20s? Yeah, man. Yeah, I was actually in a local cover band called Dolly Pardon. Oh, yeah. I love it. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we kind of spelt it like <sighs> Dolly Lama and the word pardon, like yeah. pardon me. Um, yeah, That's we did. Awesome. We, we played cover music, man. Uh, that, so that was like my first real uh, time in my life where I was performing, and uh, it was a great time. You know, yeah. I, lo- I loved it. We played '90s music, and um, it's a great era. Yeah, '80s and '90s are my my genre for music. It, that, to, that's where it just peaked. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Two thousands, everything went downhill. <laughs> <laughs> it was like uh, I mean, you said it. Not uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, and that probably prepared you for being comfortable, like on a stage in front of people. You know, we sit behind cameras a lot of times, and and uh, at least I have the benefit of having someone across from me. But a lot of times, it's you and and we were talking earlier about the fact that you don't have to have a million dollars worth of equipment. I don't know what you started with or what you're filming with now, but it could just be a. Is it? A cell phone. That's all I've ever filmed with. There you go. Cell phone. As a matter of fact, I was. I've been so like, uh, you know, I don't want to say cheap, but I guess cheap with it for the longest time that I would use like my paper towel holder as my, uh, oh, you know, yeah, that's cheap. <laughs> my, that's cheap. my stand. <laughs> Yeah, I would just like put it on, like yeah, I'd be sitting there right on my counter and getting held up by my paper towel holder, you know, because I was so lazy to just to go find a, a. I didn't think they made one for the phone. Then I finally started looking. I was like, oh wow, you can get a tripod for the phone. So yeah, yeah but that's all I've ever used, and uh, it works, man. I mean, I, my editing app. I mean, I, I literally sit in my bed at night in my drawers and just edit the videos, you know? <laughs> like, it's the world we live in. Like, how, yeah. how lucky am I, you know? Like, uh, you know, to... You're blessed, you know, I mean, yeah. look, there's real work in this, right? We talked about this. 100%. Like, there's a lot of real work. I mean, I don't take a day off from this. Every day I do, I check all the messages. I reply to the comments. I reply I reply to the inbox. You know, those are the things that, that, that get you to where, you know... Bump the, up that yeah, feed. Yeah. You know, and, and that's where, like, uh, you know, when people say, like, oh, man, you're so lucky, or, you know... Uh, but yeah but it's not a real job you know i'm like well when you get off of work every day do you want to answer messages all day long do you right. want to answer the same question of where you get that pot <laughs> you yeah. know like yeah yeah you because know, like you have to have in your mind you can't get frustrated because the 30th person today may be asking the same question because to them that's the first time first they time. said it first time. so you need to embrace them with the same empathy of yeah sure this is where you can get it you know um, 100%. And, and not everybody has that want to do that so you know, those are things you got to keep in mind when it comes to this kind of stuff. The work of this is unconventional to probably the normal nine to five, but it is constant real work, especially mentally, you know, and physically. I know that in my case, it takes between eight and 12 hours to produce one episode of Local Leaders um, from the from the pre-meetings to the editing to putting it out. And then, you know, you got to promote it. I mean, you got to show, hey, I, I just dropped this on YouTube and all of that stuff. And, of course, we release one thing I may not have mentioned to you, but we release this in audio form as well on Spotify, iHeartRadio, and all that stuff. So you get video and audio versions of our podcast. And uh, and that takes a little work. And we're not complaining, neither one of us. But, yeah, but, uh, yeah I, I hear that, too. Hey, you've retired. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you've retired, brother. Yeah, yeah. I promise you yeah. that. Tiffany Seacard with Home Key Mortgage combines the experience and knowledge you need to make your mortgage loan a smooth, stress-free process. Reach out to Tiffany for more information on the vast mortgage programs available in the Livingston Parish area. Tiffany Seacard of Home Key Mortgage, a proud sponsor of Local Leaders, the podcast. Man, I uh, I want to go over these fun facts, and then I'm going to let you roll. Uh, but we had some fun facts, and I love this first one. I said, if you purchase a yacht, what would you name it? You said, I ain't purchasing no yacht. <laughs> yeah, I ain't purchasing no yacht. So I couldn't tell you. He wouldn't even get a cell phone holder. He ain't getting a yacht. Yeah, no, yeah. I don't need a yacht, man. You know, I'll take a bass boat, you know? Yeah, like, there you go. Yeah. Uh, I, but I don't know if I put this on there, but I think at the time I was thinking to myself, if I bought a yacht, I would name it Bad Decision. <laughs> you know? uh, so if you could have any superpower, what would it be? Another thing that speaks uh, for you, ability to heal others. Yeah, yeah, man. I, you know, um, I think that like it, that would be the greatest superpower. You know, to 
to, to you know take on somebody's challenge of of who's going through pain or a disease or ailment and 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 just heal them you 100%. know just to be able to heal somebody you know like uh i mean ultimately when we think of a superhero we think of someone who saves lives right like why wouldn't that be the one you know yeah. uh, like to fly or be strong is is cool but if you really want to save a lot of lives you know to have that that power of healing others man that would be amazing. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't agree more on that. And and anywhere in the world that you could travel, you and I share this. I I picked the same place, Iceland. Yeah, it's yeah, beautiful. it is amazing. Uh, you know, I think it's 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 not thought of because of the name Iceland. You think mm, uh, cold, yeah, and, yeah, or just Eskimos. like a, you're thinking of like the Antarctic, but no, yeah. it is a very pretty area. Yeah, it would be. It would be amazing to, to see that area, and I, hopefully I, I I check that one off one day. Have you ever been to Alaska? No, I haven't, but I, I've heard of, like, the Alaskan cruise, and I'd love to take one. Done yeah. it with my wife, and I'm going to tell you, look, I'm like you, South Louisiana boy. Uh, I went on my first cruise was to Alaska, and I'm telling you, it was unreal. Mm-hmm. People from South Louisiana, we ain't never seen something like this. It, it's like being inside a painting. It's just unbelievable. Eagles fly around like crows. Wow! Uh, just, uh, just crazy, man. But, uh, but so check that out too. Alaska and Iceland. I'd love to. Yeah. So, man, thank. I can't thank you enough for coming on. Look, for those of you that we didn't know each other, mm-hmm. I was a fan. Uh, watched the show. Really enjoyed what he was doing, and uh, and so reached out. And you, you know, you didn't hesitate. You said, yeah, man, when and where, and, uh, here we are. And I can't thank you enough. I really appreciate it. I, I find you to be just an, an interesting person all around. Well, I appreciate that. And look, thank you for having me, man. I mean, you know, uh, you reaching out is a big deal, you know, um, uh, if I have the time, I try to fit these things in because yeah. they're cool. I, you, you know, you get a moment to just sit down and chat with somebody. Yeah. And, and if there's anything I love to do is talk. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, you, I, uh, we got that in common. I talk so much that, like, I'll, I'll say this often. Like, when I do get to meet people in public who, like, n- know me from the page and they're excited and they're, like, so pumped. Yeah. Like, I end up like talking myself to where they're finally like, all right, well, it was nice meeting you. <laughs> <laughs> and they, and they kind of walk up like, God, I wouldn't shut up. You know, so, uh, but I know yeah. that feeling. <laughs> <laughs> My wife does that to me sometimes. <laughs> all right, Jim, I'm going to bed. <laughs> all right, but. I appreciate it again. Um, anything, any, anything you need from the LP, man, you let me know, and uh, we got we got a crew over here, and we can uh, we can definitely take care of you and uh, and get you out there. But I'm gonna link everything in the uh, description of this episode for uh, your website and all that sort of stuff. Your YouTube. Get, he's not gonna ask you, but give him a like and a follow if you'd like to. And, uh, and let's support all of our local creators in Louisiana. This is a hotbed for it. Believe it or not, you'd be surprised. Well, you may not be surprised. But people would be surprised how many podcasters come out of Louisiana, how many successful podcasters come out of this state from every bit of genre, from business to true crime to cooking to you name it so oh uh, yeah i don't man. know what it is i think we just friendly people man well it, we, we're a fascinating part of the country man I, I, yeah. I like to tell people i feel like we're the ireland of the uh usa man yeah like we we love to sing and dance and drink and yes uh, and, and eat i was gonna say food, drink man. beer yeah yeah you know so <laughs> yeah we we are a very interesting part of the country and i think people are fascinated by that 100 percent. and i do want to thank my sponsors uh for this show all my live sponsors all my sponsors that support me every week i appreciate and love all of you uh and thank you for allowing me to continue to do this and spread the great things about local business to people all over the state of louisiana and beyond that even uh once again i am jim chapman reminding you love your community support local business and keep leading thank you very much right on Black Sheep Creative understands the importance of digital marketing and your return on your investment. It's their aim to provide professional web and graphic design services at a price point that smaller businesses and startups can afford. Get in touch with them on the web at blacksheepcreative.com.